previously on the Hassewells. We thought we'd take the scenic route to Devonport up via the Great Lake. Uh, we found Liffey Falls. I was shocked to find out that everything on the menu could be gluten free, including the fried chicken waffles. Would you just look at this masterpiece? <laughs> Got an apple juice. Mm -hmm. I love this place already. I heard almost everyone who comes here sees the platypus. And I can see him right now. He's a little show off. Footage of him biting the leaf. I win. <laughs> that works. That was easy. <laughs> Cheating again, are we? <laughs> che Cheating? When have I ever cheated? What? What? Got your berry smoothie here, Dana. I can try it if you want. Go for it. Mmm, berry, berry. Berry yogurt. Mmm, mmm. Yum. Yum indeed. We popped into the berry patch on recommendation from the lovely man at Sprite and Cider. And we've been eating and drinking too much already, so we could only squeeze in a berry smoothie, but it looks like a pretty cool place. Mm. Even prettier in September, I'd say, it was springtime when um, the berries are actually in season, but yeah. still a cool joint with lots of gluten-free on their menu. Definitely nice enough to hold events. It's really lovely outside. Yeah, anywho, Jesse wants to try some beer right here. Yeah, you better have this. <laughs> tip off from the bloke working behind the bar at Sprayton. Another one from him, what a legend, to come to Buttons Brewing in Elveston, which is on the wharf here. And I got the double barrel stout. Mmm, that's a very good stout. All right, so when we walked in, my eyes went straight to the double barrel stout. Didn't take any notice that it actually wasn't made by these guys, but it is made by a place called Button Grass Brewery in Strawn, and that is where we are headed maybe tomorrow. So I don't think they have a shop front, but maybe we can access some more Button Grass. This is quite delicious. Button's Brewing, well known around these parts. You can only get their beers in Tasmania, apparently. They've got a series of beers over in the fridge that are named after the mountain range back there. They've got random pepperberry pilsners and uh, then the standard kind of IPAs and lagers and, and, and porters but uh, I might have to take some for the road I think and um, I'll have to let you know how they go but this is, this is a nice place very nice on the water I got the one of the three mountain range beers and Mount Noman is just over there a little bit surrounded by cloud but still the same shape thank you mr. cloud named after the blade on a sundial well, I'll be damned. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, this one's a pepperberry pilsner, which is not your usual pilsner. So I'll try that one tonight, perhaps. Pepperberries must be local to Tasmania. Seen them on a few menus in various foods. May have even tried some. But yeah, there's some in this beer right here, and I will find out soon enough what they taste like. We've come a bit further up the road to the west to the town of Burnie and we've, we've laid eyes on the massive wood chip pile which <laughs> seems to be a big tourist attraction here. Uh, apparently the wood chips go from here over to China to be made into toilet paper so you can see the forest here beside what turns into your uh, There's a the thing lot you wipe of, your bum with. A lot of pre-wood chip logs laying just over there soon to meet their demise. But for now the, uh, the wood chips are just stacked up beside the ships and ready to go overseas. How do they not blow away? Maybe they're watered down. Now we're popping up the hill a little bit to Hellier's. We've got ourselves a couple of tastings here. I went for the liqueur tasting and Jesse's gone for one of the whiskey tastings that came with some cheese and crackers here. So I have Amber's chocolate buttons here where we were earlier in the video and a whiskey cream original liqueur. Mmm. That's delicious. <laughs> Jesse's got some of that on his too, so this one's all mine. The coffee liqueur. It's going to be really hard to not buy any bottles of this. <laughs> and the hazelnut liqueur. They might have some duty free at the airport. <laughs> it's not a different country, much as it sometimes feels like it here. Mm, the hazelnut's all in the, the aftertaste on that one, but the coffee and the original whiskey cream, so good. And the chocolate buttons are pretty good too.
Oh, oh, that smells really good. Original 12 year Pinot Noir finish, twin oak. So that one's been in two barrels. And then I've got a whiskey cream original, which Dana just had a great time tasting at the end there. It's not exactly like any other whiskey I've had. It's really tasty. Unpeated, pure, golden. Nice vanilla and slight honey. I wonder how different this Pinot Noir red wine barrel one. Wow, it's totally different on the smell. Not so much raisiny, but almost date, date-like fruit. And then a bit more similar in taste to the other one, but and then the, the double barrel, the twin oak. I really love, I haven't smelled a whiskey like this before, it's bringing out Christmas cake sort of thing, but not in the way that others bring out Christmas cake, like this is actually not just the fruit part of the cake, this is the icing and everything. Not the Christmas cake has icing, but this has got lots of cake going on, for me anyway. It's got the marzipan part, oh, maybe it's Christmas cake combined with wedding cake. Hmm, that's really nice, and unlike any whiskey I've ever had before. Oh, delightful flavours. Breaking the trend of all of the Australian ones tasting similar? Well, yeah, I mean it's still, you know, very uh, clean and un unpeated. These ones at least, they do do a peated. I won't be having it today. Go on, try the whiskey cream. Oh, that's right, I forgot I had another one. Mmm, Bailey's Eat Your Heart Out. Oh, that's really good stuff. Yes, Dana will definitely purchase that at some point, <laughs> somewhere. Let me just try this Pinot Noir again after some water. Nice view from here. Tell you what. I went straight from the 12 year before without water. Not nah, similar. <laughs> it's good though. After our little Hellier's Road jaunt, we've come down to the beach in Burnie, the beachfront where Dana's future favourite fish and chip shop, Fish Frenzy, is. <laughs> I don't know, the Harvey Bay one's pretty good. We'll oh, see. the Harvey Bay one's good. It all depends on the quality of the fish, and I think Tasmania no fish. Does Harvey Bay no fish? They probably know fish too. Let's put them off against each other. Oh, it's such a lovely beach. Some of the Tassie beaches are like big rocks. But smooth big rocks. This is just smooth, compacted sand. Very orange, yeah. It's very sunset. orange. Perfect timing. If you look over in that direction, it's very nice around these parts. It's nine degrees, it tells me on the wall over there. Ten degrees now. <laughs> wow, it's getting warmer. It's warming up near sunset. <laughs> Who would have thought? That's why Tassie wins. Very good calamari. I'm getting flashed by an octopus. So it's the next morning, after our fish and chips last night, we came back to Southern Wild Distillery and had a sneaky gin at their distillery there, listening to some live music as well. Very so tasty stuff. I got the meadow gin. Thank you It'll knock that. your head off. Amazing. Botanical city. And this morning we've popped into Laneway, grabbed ourselves some coffees. I've spilled mine everywhere twice now. <laughs> and went for a little walk down to the spirit of Devonport. Uh, the weather suddenly turned and my umbrella, well, RIP. Well, that's the spirit. <laughs> I see a Kmart trip in our near future and I'm a, a wee bit wet. But anyway, we're going to head to one more place in Devonport before we head off. Come to the lighthouse at Mercy Bluff here in... In windy Devonport. Very windy Devonport. It is so windy that we're hiding like in a little inset in the lighthouse so that you might actually be able to hear us. <laughs> Whoa! It is a lovely view up here, although right now it is quite windy, so um, look at your own risk. You yeah. could get some sea waves in your eyes. <laughs> it stopped raining though, which is nice. For this brief moment anyway. We did get a, a nice little kid's umbrella because that might actually fit in a suitcase. And I think that's going to be it for our time here in Devonport and around Devonport. It's been pretty cool. Some people may think it's not worth it to come all the way to Devonport. Even the views right now are worth it. Some of the um, southern Tasmanians are a little disparaging about the north, but 
we found it to be pretty cool. There's so much to see and taste here. Mm -hmm. It's been a good time. Anyway, we were going to head west after this, but all this wild weather has meant that we probably won't be able to see any of the landscapes we were going to see. So we've had a change of plans and we're going to head somewhere else instead. So tune in next week to see where that is. If you'd like to see more videos from us, please hit like on this video, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Brewing in Ulverstone, Ulverston. I don't know what to call it. Uh, We've come up a bit, come up a bit the road. We have? Let's have some water in between so we know what we're talking about. Uh, what beach are we on? Burrina Beach. We're on Burrina Beach. <laughs> if you like this video, <laughs> if, you, if you like this video, please like this video.